still tryna throw the ball On first and goal, second and goal Panicking at third Fourth, I'm wishing for a month Welcome to the 5 One Huddle Podcast. I'm excited today. We got national champion Coach Beam uh, in the house today. We got Coach D. Lane. How you feeling today? Man, I'm feeling real great, man. We're here at home of the national champions. Oh my God, Coach Beamer right here. It's my guy right here, man. Um, I've been, you was one of my first goals to get on this show, Coach, actually, when I was writing up the whole script and everything. Well, it's been my goal to be on this show, okay. so I'm fired up. Let's go, man, let's go. We got a Hall of Fame coach here in Coach Beam. I just want to give you a little bit of his background so you know where you're coming from. Coach Beam started out at Sierra College, or Sierra High School in uh, San Diego in 1979. He moved to Oakland, um, where he was at Skyline High School all through most of the 80s and all through the 90s. He accumulated uh, 11 section championships, 15 league championships, and four undefeated seasons, and went undefeated in league play throughout the 90s. He boasted he's boasts 160 wins, 33 losses, and a uh, three tie overall record during his time in high school. From there, he jumped to Laney, where he was the running back coach at first, and then he trans transitioned into the offensive coordinator position, and then eventually became the head coach and athletic director. So that's big. Yeah, no, we decided to have Coach Beam on the show. Uh, like, he's been around. He's a local guy from the Bay Area, coached at Skyline, now the national champ, Laney College. And so today, we want to get the insight of Coach Beam, see how, you know, everything that's crazy and great things that happened this past season. So we'll get into it. So, Coach, um, let's talk about the transition you had from, you know, Sierra to moving out to Oakland. Well, you know, I grew up in San Diego, but I went to Kearney High School, which is a very diverse high school for me and I played junior college football. I was playing junior college football as all-conference as a 205-pound offensive lineman. I'm proud of that, okay. you know, move, pound for pound. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Okay. I don't know, more getting in the way, okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I blew out my knee and I had ACL surgery. Then I got a scholarship offer to New Mexico, Eastern New Mexico. Then I had my second surgery. So my high school, uh, or excuse me, my junior college coach said, hey, go coach at this high school while you rehab and get ready to go. And I did it, and I was at Sarah High School. Loved it. Took him to the playoffs for the first time, played against Marcus Allen and his, his folks. And I loved it, and I'm like, I'm not gonna go to the NFL, so I like working with young people, let's do it. Then I moved up here to Oakland, and the job opened at Skyline when I got here, so I was a defensive coordinator for five years. Then I spent 17 years as the head coach. Coming to Oakland was, like I tell people, you know, I didn't pick Oakland, Oakland picked me. Mm, okay. And I loved every minute of it, you know, the impact that you make or can make. But, you know, everybody talks about, oh, over the years, you made this great impact on young people because, you know, I've always taught in East Oakland. But really, I think those young people made an impact on me and shaped who I am because I firmly believe, you know, you know, the saying, I am somebody. Anybody can be somebody if they put their mind to it. All we have to do is give you the opportunity. Mm. I like to tell people that Sky, uh, Skyline, Laney, gives you hope and opportunity. Now Definitely. what are you going to do with it? Definitely gave me hope and opportunity. I played under Coach Beam and, uh, you know, uh, when I first got here, we had a plan and he, he helped me uh, definitely achieve that, my goal and to hash that plan out the right way. I wanted to be a, a mid-year guy and get out right away and he, he held true to his word and got me out uh, after one, one semester. But remember, you already took care of business in high school. You came here and true. took care of business. You had a, it was tough playing at this level for you. Yeah, you, definitely, you know, for the you first had, few weeks. It would have been sure. nice if you were a little bit bigger, but you had the biggest heart around, and you brought it. Yeah. But you were smart, and you were dedicated to your craft to get better. The coaches love coaching you, D-Lane, because you were coachable. You absorbed what needed to happen. So it was a two-way street, brother. You did yeah. what you're supposed to do. Coach, um, you touched on it. You said your, high, your old junior college coach is the one that got you yes. the coaching? I was going I had a question for you. I was going to ask you who were some mentors and coaches that you looked up to as a young coach. You probably still look up to coaches now, but yeah. getting into the game, like who were some guys you were looking to? You know, I played guidance? it I played at Kearney High School. It was kind of like Skyline, a perennial championship. I mean, I think I lost 3 games in 3 years of high school football because okay. we didn't we didn't start till 10th grade. Okay. So he was good. Then Charlie Popa was my line coach and he instilled upon me like, "Look, there's more to football than football. It's school." So he said, you can do more. And he gave, you know, pushed me to be a coach. But I tell everybody, you know, Mike Martz, the Rams Super Bowl coach, Martz, right? That yeah, was yeah. my OC. 
So okay. I learned from him. Okay. And then when I moved up here to go to Cal State Hayward, which is now East Bay, mm-hmm. Mike Bellotti, the Oregon coach, was the OC there. Yeah, so they, they used to have a football program, yes. right? Okay. So I've been around some big-time offensive-minded coaches. And so, not that I'm saying I am, but I've been influenced by people. I've been around good coaches my whole life. And so, to me, I can't let them down and not do a good job with the people I'm in to. So I want to be able to inspire you to be whatever you can be. I never want to tell someone that they can't do it. I may think in my back of my mind, I don't know if they can do it. But, you know, it's possible. You know, anything's possible, you know. So I don't want to be a dream killer. Mm-hmm. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, speaking into being around Mike Marks, we know he's part of, you know, what they call the greatest show on yes. turf. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, for the, for the young listeners that don't know, you know, uh, those Kurt Warner teams, Marshall Falk, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, I mean, they tore it up. Um, you know, being being the offensive play caller at Laney, how do you think your uh, your game has evolved with the game changing? You know, more of a space game, more of a speed game. Yeah. Cause we know Laney stays true to the roots with running that rock. So <laughs> I'm always gonna run the rock, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 people ask me why do I run the ball, but understand this: when I went to Skyline, every year that I was there, the, whoever the starting back was was a Division One player, and many of them went to the NFL. So. If you got, if I had all these great quarterbacks, then I'd probably be a throwing guy, right? Mm-hmm. But in this area in Oakland, you're always going to get someone that can run the ball. Yeah, that's true. So facts. let's build it around there. What we've done over the last three years is we've evolved our offense. And I, what I did is I kind of, you know, the spread. But I'd use my, my eye back mentality and roots to use it in the spread. So we're, we're out of, everything's in gun. We don't go anything under center. And what it does is it creates matchup problems right so if you want to we run the ball like in the state championship game they're playing six in the box i can run against six in the box all day oh, long <laughs> as soon as they try to creep someone in our receivers are what we've done is we got unselfish receivers now they block like linemen mm-hmm. and so we flip the ball out to them and we let them do what they need to do and now they're running with the ball now everybody's trying to stop the little quick screen and everything from them. then we go up top with a fake mm-hmm. then we catch them so we end up getting a lot of man-to-man so a receiver can th- flourish. If you can be man-to-man, you're going to be successful. But at the same time, we reduce the box because with six hats in the box on defense, I got five blockers plus now the quarterbacks are running in the back. And so this year our, our quarterback ran for 900 yards. Mm. You know, our running back ran for, you know, 12, 1,300, right? Come on now. You can't. We were too heavy. My year, what Kurt ran for? Kurt ran for He did. He did. But see, we didn't, quite, was but we didn't <laughs> quite understand at that time how to utilize them. Well, we were still just playing with it. Yeah. Now we went. If, now if I had him, he'd be even better yeah. because we've embraced the whole thing. Anybody can throw that that lateral pass or what I call long handoff out there. Anybody can do that. But in top that was of the extension of the run game, exactly to yeah. me it is. Yeah, definitely. Right? So you know we throw that like crazy, and then we get our receivers all can run with the ball. They get yak. Mm-hmm. They love yak. Mm-hmm. So you know I'm fired up. Coach, um, I know uh, last season, you know, I talked to you before I got into coaching. Last year, I was on the defense, uh, defensive side of the ball. This year, I'm, I'm doing co-offense coordinator. And um, you kind of had the same upbringing as far as starting that defensive coordinator. Yeah. How has that benefit, benefited you when calling plays? I think I always – so, for number one, for me, as a DC, you want sacks, you want turnovers, right? As the OC, I, I don't want to give up sacks. So if you look at Laney, historically, doesn't give up very many sacks mm-hmm. because that's momentum that changes things, right, and turnover. So we really – it makes me work out. But I also know that – I know what the defense is trying to attack us, right, so I can do – take advantage of some of those ideas. And I think you just kind of get an idea, you know. I still believe in this saying because I was a head coach, right, offense wins games, defense wins championships. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure we're always strong on defense. Even now as a play caller and a head coach, I still make sure our defense gets plenty of time, whatever they need. And then you mentioned this early, you know, with Coach Deco, special teams coordinator, right? Mm-hmm. Let's make sure that we're great on special teams. So we block a lot of kicks. Like in the state championship, we blocked, you know, mm. punt, sets up our first touchdown. See? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely big. I, I know you touched on a skyline. You were around a lot of Division One NFL running backs. You run the football here. You've had good running backs, you know, so C.J. Anderson play here. So what do you look for? What traits do you look for in a good running back? You know, I think they're, they're, they're all over, right? You can't coach a running back. Does that mean? I can't you turn can't, them into Like, you're either a natural running back or you're not. If I got to tell you how to run the ball, you can't run yeah. it. But what I can do is make sure that I teach you aiming points and teach you to compete and run hard. So, you know, for us, I want balance. But more importantly, I want vision. 
I want speed, but I'm, but okay, I can deliver quickness, okay. right? I don't care how big I've had tall, you know, Frank the Tank, 220 pound running back, mm-hmm. you know, CJ, 185, you know, this year, you know, John McDonald's probably about 180, yeah. but he's 10'5. Marcel, we talked about Marcel, very shifty, but put together. Mm-hmm. Amari, Amari Davis, probably a little bit faster. I know it's about that time, so you know, let's let's think about it, okay? Uh-huh. Those, so you, it doesn't, you don't need to have one particular guy. I, I, that's real good insight on running backs. I feel, I mean, today's game it seems on a p- previous show I've knocked a lot of running backs. I say running backs the easiest, you know, uh, position to replace. I believe it is, yeah, especially because you what know you we call look, them the whores of the NFL. Oh, yeah, that's what <laughs> that's what my high school coach called them, Coach Pooh, whores of the NFL. But I mean, look at the Patriots. I mean, the best back probably been Corey Dillon through this whole run. They have a guy that can run hard, a guy that can catch, and a balanced guy. You see your Eagles. You know, when they won a the Super Bowl again, they had three backs that could do it all. So that's why I, I, running game is important. Like you either have three guys that can do it all, in my opinion, or one guy that can just do everything. So think about this. So we're in the state championship game this against Ventura, right? Yeah. They were they scored five times in a row. We didn't stop them. Mm. But they would score in two minutes. I was scoring 14 minutes. Mm. They score in three minutes. I score in 16 minutes. I'm eating clock. With a strong running game, I'm eating. Just think about when you're on that sideline, you're getting pissed. Okay. You can't, your offense can't get out there, so now you, you make a mistake because you're trying to do something too fast. Defense, I'm taking your heart from you. My linemen are pounding you, right? You can't do anything. Your DBs, your, your pretty boys, they mad. Mm-hmm. Now they want to stick their nose in there. Once they do, Angelo Davis, McClyman's yeah, High School, right? Nice. Bam, bam, two dugs, right? Because they want to start taking their nose in there. Came out on a naked boot, boom, wide open. No, that's true. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm, I'm not against the run game. I'm just, you know, my, my no, comments. I hear, I hear you. Yeah. Cause worse, I mean, we seen. I mean, my whole life, a consistent team in the Bay Area. I seen Stanford. I see them consistently, always yeah. winning. And they stick true, like you know, what Hall out there. Yeah. Daylight, daylight. Day day I the mean, ball. the great, probably the greatest yeah. high school team in the country. Just they, they stay true to run game. And I, I believe, you know, we see this spread game as you yeah. know things against smaller, smaller linebackers. Where um, we seen it this year in the playoffs. The Patriots play big boy ball against the Chargers, who had six, seven yep. DBs at one time. Mm-hmm. So if you do put together a power team against all these teams built to spread. It'd be, you know, pretty dominant. So my offensive philosophy is like from Mike Martz and those guys, right? Take what they give you. Don't f- try to fit a square pig in a round hole. So you trying to throw, they're in nickel and dime, or they're, all the D linemen are putting their ears back and trying to come. Let them come. Now I'm trapping them, right? You're going to be a nickel, I'm running the ball. Now you want to be heavy, I'm throwing the ball. Take what they give you. So I have no problem doing That's my motto, you know. So look. What I again now there's certain times you know I'm gonna just run it because I want to eat clock especially when I see that we can, but you know again I can't be too stubborn and when they load like this year against um, I'm gonna give you a prime example we're playing Chabot they loaded the box I didn't get them out of that that was me bad coaching yeah we still won but I could have made it a lot easier on our players. Yeah, I think, I mean, I feel like calling plays is one of the hardest things to do because, as you know, it's, it's flow, it's your game plan, a lot of things go into it. And football, is, if you look back, to, it's usually like five plays that win the game, five plays that lose the game. So it's a tough balance in calling plays, definitely. Um, Coach, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, how was the transition from being a high school play caller to being college and what, to college on this level and what's some of the things you had to change within your philosophy or within your office system to be – successful on this level so everybody told me you know this ain't high school anymore that's crap football's football so it wasn't now what i would say is the coaching's better so when i was winning in the oal the coaching wasn't very good so you could come with a game plan and run it the whole time up here you come in your game plan they're going to stop it so you better have plan b and plan c the coaching is just better so it's not that you can, you know, I don't think you have to change because you still, no matter what, right, it's still blocking and tackling. Mm-hmm. So now the biggest difference from high school to college for me is now you have to recruit. Yeah. You got to go find kids. So at Skyline or McClimates or even Castle Valley, you know where you're going to go. And you can't wait to, you know, you, you, you know you're, you're playing Pop Warner, you're going to go to that high school, you play JV, then you play varsity, so it's there. Remember, I, I'm turning over a roster, half the roster every year. Mm-hmm. And they're coming from places that have never won. Some have won. So some know how to win. Like, you know, we have, you know, Javari Anderson coming from De La Salle. He played in the biggest games, you know, national champion yeah. TV games. 
you get a kid from, you know, a Royal or somebody, you know, they ain't won a game. I remember <laughs> I had a quarterback my first year here as an OC, Matt Dardine, phenomenal quarterback. He won two games in four years of high school. But for me, he was a Division One quarterback. He got all the records, <laughs> but he had never won. Yeah. And then he threw a touchdown to Chuck Walker with 7.8 seconds left in the game. Neither of them made that big play. Chuck was from Hayward. Never had to come down to the wire to make that play. Yeah. So we kind of find out what they have. You can't coach that. You know, you try to instill it in drills. You try to compete. I think, you know, when I'm here, I like to compete, compete on everything. Everything. You know, that's what I feel like. Because I think drill, that's what drill. life drill, I think, drill. I think life is about competition, right? Healthy competition, right? But I think you learn when you put yourself up against somebody or a t task. It might be like when you look at you, you guys are so prepared for today. That was a challenge. That was a competition. Maybe you competed against each other. <laughs> Who's going to have the best questions? Yeah. You hear yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's what it all comes down to, right? We compete every day, but remember to compete against yourself. Make it healthy, healthy competition. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, competition brings out the best. So exactly. You know. um, my, my, my favorite thing I think, Coach, about Laney is the process here. And from academics, you know, with Doug, Doug I, I went around to multiple junior colleges before I locked in on Laney, and you guys were the only one to show me an academic plan okay. to get me out of here in three semesters if I wanted to stay. Yes. And the, you guys were the only one that did that. And I really appreciate that. And then also just how you attack practice, like you said, with competing, even just with the, uh, what is it, the um, different drills and um, how do you control practice? Uh, with the bugs periods, yeah, the periods, periods like I, that, I had that at the next level, and yeah. it was easy for me to transition. You know, I just, I just think you got the right process up here, coach. We to want help a, these kids. We want this to mimic where you want to be, right? Look, you didn't grow up, you didn't grow up wanting to come to Laney or any community college, right? Mm -hmm. But when you come here, you do have a goal to be somewhere else. We want to simulate that something else. I've been blessed to be around some of the best coaches in in the world. I worked for the National League for years, so I had you know, an eye to be able to be at practices and be around people, right? Not go hear someone talk at a clinic, but talk to them face to face, sit in their office, you know, really understand what's going on. But it's about, like you said, a process of a plan. But number one, the plan is this, academics. You know, don't get played. You play the system because the system will play you. You and I talked about when you're out, well, they want me to play, I'm hurt. Well, then you tell them you can't go, mm -hmm. right? Get your degree. They're paying for your degree. You paying with the aches and pains in your body. Yeah. Get your degree. Even when you come to Laney, we're going to work you to death. Make us make you have a degree. Make us have tutoring for you. Make us have Doug, right? So everything's mm -hmm. set up for you to be successful since you left. Now we have food when you go to tutoring. Okay. We feed Some them, more right? Incentives. Exactly, okay. right? Okay. Because I know you're hungry now, mm -hmm. right? So we want to make that, right? We want to, We have our you know, the math and English class. So now we have the tutor before you go to math. We have a tutor an hour before class before you go to math, mm. right? Okay. Make us make you successful. Demand that from us as coaches, right, as educators. Our job is to educate you. How it's done is going to be different for everybody in this room, but we have to educate you. Your job is to come and be a student athlete every day. We work this together. I, I think that's big, uh, folks, on, like you said, a degree, the plan, because as, you know, me and Delaney, former college athletes, is, you know, even if, let's say you go to the NFL, we're, like we were talking off camera, a lot of guys don't have the financial literacy. Nope. So you need to be smart. And it doesn't matter if you, you could be the best player to ever walk, to play this game, or the worst player, it's going to end someday. So you got to have the skills outside of football to succeed in life. 100%. Could, I imagine being 35 years old with retire from the game, play 20 years in the league, and then you got a seventh grade reading level. You know, so. <laughs> but see, the league didn't do that to you. Someone pimped you earlier in your life where they mm -hmm. moved you through. And I tell this story to everyone. When you look at my office, you see Marvell Smith jersey in my office, right? Marvell played for me at Skyline. Marvell spent 10 years in the NFL. That's a long time in the NFL. Yeah. He's got two Super Bowl rings, Pro Bowl. He's one of the 10 highest paid people in the league. But at 10 years, 32 years old, he's out of the league. What do you do now? The rest of your life, you have to do something. He's got his degree. Mm. He's take care of himself, right? He had financial literacy. He didn't blow his money, right? He did right, wise investment, but because he had a degree, he could personally check on what's going yeah. on, right? Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not owing someone else to trust. Like, they just had this thing with Lorenzo Ball, right? He got someone stole his, his own people stole oh, his yeah, money. Yeah, 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 you hear what I'm saying? That yeah. was his, his dad's people. Well, yeah, for like you 10 can, years, that's supposed to be your boy. That's supposed to be your boy, and they taking money from him. But 
that's the way the world works. And so if you, you know, we, we look, Oakland, right? You know how it is, right? Mm -hmm. You either gonna be a hustler or be hustled. Exactly. What's it gonna be? That's mm -hmm. true. You know, hustle your game. Exactly. I think a lot of you know young athletes, you know, like the school piece is just as big as the football piece because it keeps your options open. You know, even if you're a great football player, let's say you want to get into coaching, anything you gotta have that degree piece. And you know, I feel like coming to Laney, you know, you said the financial plan, everything that's gonna help a lot of young athletes out for the long run. So. Um, Coach Beam, I seen a, a debate recently on Twitter, and I wanted to ask your input on it. The coaches, uh, a few coaches, are talking about: Is it a high school coach? It's, it's for the high school level. Is it a high school coach responsibility, full full responsibility to get their players a scholarship? That's a tough question, man. It really is. So it's when I was at Skyline, I thought that was my job, right? I wanted to do that, right? I thought these kids put in so many hours with me, you know, summer all the time, right? I owe them that, but. In another sense is that, you know, a lot of coaches, you know, they, wait a minute, I get paid to teach basically and then coaching is part of it. So where is that fine line? Me personally, I think that that's the part of it. But see, many high school kids, everybody thinks they're, you know, no one wants to say they're not a D1. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's D1. Well, you 5'2", playing <laughs> offensive line, brother, you know, like me. Yeah. I was 205 pounds. Was I a D1? I mean, I got letters from D1 because I made all conference, but they didn't, must not have seen really how big I was, right? Yeah. So am I really D1? No. But the point is, in my mind, I am. So there's that reality check. Now, what, now, like, I t even here at Laney, right, I tell them, I said, look, well, coach, you're going to give me a deal? No, that ain't my job. Here's what I do. My job is to bring Division One coaches here. As you know, there's coaches here every day. I'm walking through the halls. So day. they're here. Now, your film, and more importantly, your transcript mm -hmm. has to open the door for you to get in. So the players got to the airport. Right. I don't have no scholarships in my back pocket. Like, look in there. You can, I tell the kid the other day, I said, look in my pocket. You think there's one in there? <laughs> Ain't nothing in there, right? Yeah. But my job is to bring the guys here to see it. So I would say that's the college coach, uh, high school coach's job. Do you run a good enough program? Do you have film, good film, right, so that people can see it and able to be, you know, to recruit you? Are you, like, you know, they send um, questionnaires to you. Do you fill them out and send them back on time? You know, are you making sure that your athlete has Division One grades? Are you explaining to them what those grades are, right? Are you able to, you know, make sure they understand that, look, nothing is guaranteed. So, right, there's more money on academic scholarships than there are in athletic scholarships, Definitely. you know? So that is more probably the job of a high school coach, you know? And then, you know, I think these guys, I've seen more and more with high school coaches are taking them on some tours. Yeah. And so sometimes take them on the tour to see this could be you, right? This could be your next step at a young age. Now, once I take you aside, I take you to Cal or San Jose State. Now you kind of see it. All right, let's talk about what you have to do, right? Okay, you, got, you know, these are the grades you need. Are you working out every day? Yeah. You know, are you in the weight room doing these things? And, you know, you're getting your time now. Again, if you're a DB and you're running 5 four, 40, dude, you ain't going to a D1. Mm -hmm. But if you're running 4 eight, as a sophomore, let's see if we can make it a 4-6 by your senior year. Now, right? So let's look at D-Lane, right? Were you a D1 guy at high school? Maybe. But what you did, you were undersized. So you came to this level to prove that your size was not a detriment to what you could do, right? You, yeah. over, you outplayed your size. Linemen are like that, right? So those are things. Or, you know, like our receiver this year, Jared Smart, right? His dad was a big-time player, coaches in the NBA, won the national championship in basketball, right? Okay. So he went to Dublin, but he's, he's not that fast. So he came here and proved that he could get open at this level for two years. So, yeah, if you clock him, you probably go, man, coach, you ain't got D1 speed, but you ain't covering him. You ain't getting open. But you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but he yeah. proved that. So when you don't have those measurables sometimes – this is a way to come to this level to prove that you can do it because the coaching's better and there's better talent, talent yeah. right? You're, you know, you're playing. You know, when the you're a high school, when you're too. a high school senior, you're playing against a freshman or a sophomore. Come on, you come here, you playing against grown men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's I think that's on point as far as high school responsibilities. I know one thing I was lucky with uh, Coach Peters McClimans. He you know he, he guides you through you know JUCO. He let players know you know what you're a JUCO player. You need a little weight on you. You do this, or you, you know, like I think it's coach's job, you know, to at least give players honest evaluations. And the problem I believe is players don't take that, like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, everyone's to go. Of deep course, more. of course. And like I said, you know, like I had this conversation the other day with the kid, right? I said, look, I've been doing this 39 years. You right? 
I don't know what a D1 player looks like, <laughs> right? Because it only takes one. We had this receiver, Talib. A coral, remember Talib? Probably he's older than you, but he was brown, dark skin. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he played my second yeah. year. I think. So, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, he had all these like eighty catch, whatever, right? Seventy catches, whatever. And he thought he was a D one player. I said, I don't think you are. I, I don't think you're fast enough, right? But you know, he proved me wrong. But only one school wanted him. Right. He went to La Tech with okay. Tony Franklin and those guys, okay. right? Yeah, down there, never so then he goes there, and he's the leading receiver there. So he says, now I'm an NFL guy. I said, man, I don't know if you're an NFL guy, but I'm not going to doubt you again. So nothing happened after the first year. So he trained and trained and trained. The next year, went to a you know pro day. One scout from Carolina, Ricky Proles, who played on the greatest show on the you know, oh, turf, yeah. okay. right? He goes, oh, this guy kind of reminds me of good hands, runs hard, but not overly fast. They brought him to camp. The mini camps where you kind of make it, he made it enough to go to summer camp. Mm. He still got cut, but the point was one guy thought he might make it. You only have to convince one guy yeah. that mm -hmm. you're good enough. Mm -hmm. I should never doubt it anybody because I'm not that one guy. But I'm saying in my mind, and this is where I'm going to be honest, you know me. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, I tell you guys, you may not. You, I ain't going to sugarcoat it. I don't know that you're D1. And we, you and I talked about that. I said, if you're trying to leave now, you probably won double A. If you wait another year, you could do two years of showing people get a little bit bigger. Maybe you say, Coach, I still want to go. So mm -hmm. you left. No mm -hmm. big deal. You were happy. I'm happy for you. We, we, we came with a plan. But, you know, it's just that one guy. And how does it work? And, there, you know, it happens all the time. You know, how many guys are in the NFL that were J.C. players? There's quite a few. How many guys, C.J. Anders is a prime example, are done well in the NFL that were free agents? Mm. They didn't even get drafted. So, again, don't let anybody take your dream away, but understand, have a backup plan. So your dream sometimes might be B. You know, everybody says, well, you better have a plan B. Well, maybe that's your plan B. Your A is still, I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to get my degree. But always have something, no matter what it is. Have a plan in case that that avenue is not open to you. No, I think that's that's big for you know young young athletes right now on the JUCO high school level to hear that. I mean, especially in college, like like you said, and you know self self evaluate yourself. Like, what do you do well? You know, for me, I knew I'm short and slow. I play receiver, so I know I wasn't going to D one guy. I, was, I have good hands. I can run routes. I knew my skill set. I knew you know. So I think these players just have to evaluate you know their skill set. So, but that was smart that you're able to do that. It's a tough thing, right? Oh, yeah. Self-awareness. Just like this, right? Period, yeah. Look at all these people you know in your life, male or female, right? They swear they're good looking. Yeah. You look like, dang, they ugly as sin. <laughs> but someone loves them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like I tell you, outside your mama, that's the only one that's going to say you're pretty. <laughs> but there's someone in life that will say, man, you you pretty in other ways. Again, it's superficial, right? So go do your thing, man. Don't you know? But it's hard to do that. It, is. it just is. Definitely, definitely was. A, I would say definitely was a sport you played your whole life, or you know, you're just so attached to it. Football getting some opportunities. I believe, I believe football has you know it's more than just playing, coaching, and getting the scouting personnel. Me and Delane exactly. doing a podcast now. So so many opportunities outside of the actual playing aspect. I think young players need to realize if you really love the game. Absolutely, um, coach. I had one one another question for you on the high school level, and um, I actually kind of got some of the insight from Deco on, on this topic as far as seven on seven. And Deco and a couple of uh, F FBS coaches I've talked to about it too, they feel some t type of way about these seven on seven programs and seven on seven coaches because they go out to recruit some of these players to their high school and they're not there. You know, and you ask the head high school, oh, where's so-and-so at? Oh, he's on the trip with this guy. Well, why he's not here with his team, you know, working out. Or have you dealt with any of that so far? Like, as far as recruiting, you go to a school and the guy isn't yeah, there? Yeah, you know, we not so much, but I get it. You know, like I said, 7-on-7, seven seven, that's the tennis you league, man. That ain't real football, yeah. right? And then now the 7-on-7 seven seven is five wides all the time. Well, who plays five wides? Exactly. But I know that there's some positive to it, right? It, mm -hmm. teaches, you, it teaches you how to compete. You mm -hmm. get against some of the best people. And you get some different coaching. Me, we ran seven on seven when I was at High Scotland, right? I enjoyed taking the kids there, but we were man to man team, right? We played man to man all the time, knowing that, you know, you get four seconds or four and a half seconds throwing a passing league. We never, at Scotland, you better not let someone have four and a half seconds. I'm going to fire somebody. <laughs> yeah. right? But yeah, the point is, we got to be good at it. Yeah. And we got to compete and they got to see other folks. And so there is, I think, anything, there's good and bad with anything. I'm not going to say that, but I, I do know that I worry as a, for a profession that 7 on 7 is becoming like AAU basketball where kids are being pimped. They're being pimped for their money to say this, this, and this. That may not be reality, right? 
And so it bothers me because you can see I I was looking at a couple of different play, people that like these are number one quarterbacks, won't he, won't he, won't, because only seven on 17. But in a real season, when people are trying to hit them, they don't, they can't Not get it done. And they got, you know, coverages, they got linemen coming, got linebackers dropping, it's different. Definitely. So, I, I mean, I think there's a place for it. I think people are putting too much emphasis in the wrong way, though. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree with what you say to me. I think I kind of think I remember in high school it wasn't seven on seven leagues for me. I graduated in 2012. We did seven on sevens in the summer. So, Correct. we had, you know, up to Chabot, different JUCOs. Yes. I think it's better like that because, one, you're with the, the, the you players teams. you're playing with. Exactly. Um, but as you said, there's benefits from it that you can, like, let's say you're a slow receiver. Well, I'm going against the number one corner in my state, yeah. and I just scored on three times. So it's benefits, but it's not real football, like you said. But but here's the flip side to it. Maybe you're because we know. Let's be honest, right? There's some high schools aren't very good. Yeah. Their coaches don't do extra. And maybe you are, um, you know, a really good receiver that is a run game, right? Yeah. Their court don't have a court, so you can go there and show your skills. Yeah. Um, I know we're, you know, I think that I like to. I got some more I would like to say on this in a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Houston Lillard. Team I know. Yeah, yeah, he just, Lillard. I just okay. got in contact with him. So Team Lillard, Twitter. right? He does it the right way. One is he doesn't have to pimp the kids because of his brother Damien, right? Mm -hmm. But what Houston is trying to do is teach these kids values and train them for their position. He uses the vehicle as a seven-on-seven, seven, right? So he looks at it different. He doesn't need your money, mm. right? Yeah. Some of these cats, just like AU, that's their job. That's their money. Mm -hmm. So are they really looking out for your best interest? And remember, in seven on seven, you don't need grades. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right now, Houston, being different, he's holding them to an academic standard as well. He's okay, you can come my seven on team, but you got to go to tutoring. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Team Lillard, I know I'm giving a shout out to him because my boy, he's but he's he's doing it the right way, I think, okay. in my mind. He's got some great players out of the north northwest. And he's in a different situation because his brother Dame, obviously, right? Yeah, definitely. But but he's doing it the way, you know, like he him and I talk all the time. And he says, well, coach, I don't, I'm not going to play this kid because he ain't going to class. Or he took this kid that no one knew about and then trained him. The kid had been a basketball player, and now he's got a football scholarship mm, right. because okay. his coach couldn't, right? So, yeah. I, so I said, like I said, I think there's good and yeah. bad. I, I don't want to ever say there's absolute. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I think I think to make it more good and have the more positive, you know, effect that we want to have, I think it just be a little more organization with it. You know, your coaches should be like checked more. I feel like there's need to be a checks and balances. Yeah, with I just it. wish the high schools took advantage of it, right? Yeah. So that you know, more of a high school league, make them make them be an off, you know, kind of like you have, um, you know, uh, off season flag, right, or off season yeah. seven on seven. So make it a league for McClymans versus Castle Valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, that would be a way that, and then you got to have grades. Nah, yeah. That ain't that ain't a fair matchup. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Not right now. Maybe yeah. in the '90s for Castro, yeah, but not yeah. right now. But Carl. you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But it would be a way. And we all know when you're a student athlete and you're participating, your grades are better. As soon as you get out of season, mm -hmm. your grades slip because you waste your time. So if you were, had to be in this other league, and it. You had a grades, maybe that wouldn't slip. So maybe we get more kids Division One ready at yeah. the end of the day. Okay. That's, so that's a good. That is a good point. Um, I mean, we're gonna leave you off with this. Coming out for you know a big season last year. Uh, what do you think it's gonna take you know for Laney to be that that constant contender year in and year out? I think we already are, right? I think we have been, and I think you got to look at it two different ways, right? Even when we weren't winning the national championship, right, we were still sending 90% of our athletes out. We still doing what my mission as the head coach was to educate young men, primarily black men, brown guys, right, like, you know, with, with the photos we talked about, mm -hmm. giving them a place to, so they can get better. So that hasn't changed. So we've, I think we've always been a championship there. And I think that's what you have to look at now. National champ, state championship, yeah, you know what I mean, getting the ring. Let's not lose sight of what we're here for, right? And... You know, I think it's we, because of who, how we recruit, we don't bring in, we're not like City that brings in 30 guys from out of state. We don't, you know, we might have six guys out of state. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of dependent on what the local talent looks like. And I mean that there could be, there's always going to be good talent in this area, but if they got grades, they're not coming, right? Yeah. So when they don't have grades, we get them. And so, you know, when we get the two photos, you know, Anthony and, and yeah. Joe, they didn't have grades. So, you know, here, they're both power five guys. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to change that mission. I believe in community college. Now, I'm okay with our community college growing. You know what I mean? It's like Antioch, 
Pittsburgh, yeah. you know, down San Jose, mm -hmm. Sacramento even. But I think that's where we need to stay in. So we kind of are limited, you know, because I don't want to go out of state. I think the kids here that we deal with every day need us. And if I'm going to help them, I need them and their families. Because if you got an issue at home, I mean, if I have an issue, I can call home and get help. Mm -hmm. If you're from Florida or Georgia, man, you know, well, there ain't no help, right? Mm -hmm. And if you need help, and let's say I'm on you too hard. You know, I'll be on people, mm -hmm. right? Well, you can go home and talk to moms or your high school coach or whoever and, like, help you, man, just get through this, right? Yeah. So having that being here is, is good, but it also is tough because – the talent here goes up and down. You both know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have been involved. It, it, it ebbs and flows. And as long as we stay there, we're going to do it. But we're always going to be good, you know, and we'll be great. And I'll tell you what, being great, we're great every day in a lot of ways. This Winning the state championship, I, and everybody can't believe I say this, it was luck. <laughs> See, you can't believe I say that. And the reason is this, because guys stayed healthy at the right time. But I always heard winning championships, it, it requires a little luck. Yeah, Almost in every sport. It does. Any sport. Yeah. Right? You got to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You have to be healthy at the right time. The right matchup has to happen, right? Everything has to align. The right play calls. You know, the right play calls. But, you know, the right matchup who we played, yeah. right? You know, we played Ventura. I don't think they know how to stop the run. I don't think they yeah. run the ball. Anybody runs the ball, right? So if you threw the ball, they're going to probably be all over us. But we ran, so they didn't know how to. And then we hit them with special teams. We, yeah. we went after them on, you know, Deco special teams, yeah. right? I don't think they, down there they spend as much time because we're laney. We've always been a small school, right? Mm -hmm. So we take all three phases so, so importantly, right? So we spend a ton of time on special teams where maybe other teams haven't had to because they had so much other talent. Okay, I think that was a perfect segue, Coach, because I was going to ask you, I feel like you had other, probably more better, after talking to Deco, you had better talented teams. Like, I feel like my defense was a real good talented team the year before with Seth and Jamal. That, that team was great on defense. What made this team, besides the luck factor, I mean, I think you answered it already, all three phases, but what made this team have the ability to I think to win it just all? was, you know, was we were good on offense, good on – a lot of times in community college, right, you have – a freshman quarterback and a veteran defense, or you have a veteran quarterback and offense and a young defense, right? Yeah. This year we, you know, we got in, we got Jordan Brookshire came from Santa Rosa where he had some issues and came to Laney. He flourished. John McDonald, our running back, he had left on a track scholarship because hmm. he played with Marcel and Jam uh, Amari as freshmen. And then mm -hmm. when they played, he was on a track scholarship and left. Hmm. We decided to come back and want to play football. Our line, our starting left tackle and center, both would have played the year before, but got hurt. Mm -hmm. So this was literally their third year, you know, third and fourth year here. Now we got this veteran line. Yeah. Our two linebackers happened to come in both together, ready to play. Jordan Whitley, the guy that went to Oregon State, finally got in shape <laughs> to do what he needed to do. And we had these two great corners come in, the Wright brothers, right? And one had been a receiver his whole life and came to be cornered. And all of a sudden we got – Two six three corners and Demet, the one kid from out of state, who's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He won a state championship. Y'all got him from Ohio, right? Uh, yeah, Cincinnati okay. yeah, was yeah, LaSalle. Yeah. Now you got three great Shorty corners. Shorty was telling me about him. Yeah, you know, my boy yeah, Shorty, Shorty. I was working with Shorty. Yeah. That's my guy, yeah, right? Exactly. There. So you know, so luck when everybody came at that right time. Jared Smart, our, our receivers were all sophomores, okay. all unselfish, all. When you looked at them, I mean, these are received with guns, mm. right? You talk about they got guns, right? They they took a BJ, you know. Well, Angelo, Matt guy didn't have guns, but he's yeah. a phenomenal kid. Yeah. But Jared Smart, right? And then yeah. they just got it together. So again, it just when I say that, that's what happens. And now this year, whoo, it's gonna be tough. We got a young quarterback, right? Didn't play last year. He was on the team, but he's gonna have to go. Line is solid, but we gotta find a running back. Two new linebackers. The two corners were freshmen. Are back. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. But our safety was a three-year player, shirted, two-year starter. Now we got to find that guy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's now it's on us as coaches. It's always on us. We got to get him ready, right? That's, That's what we got to do. And then we got to get D Lane to help us with, you know, young Connor. Young Connor you know, over at Castro I'm Valley. Lenny you know, forever, get it, baby. baby. I'm Lenny forever. So, I mean, you know, with those knees, you know, what, what, what do you want to tell, you know, young high school players or guys thinking of transferring to JUCO? You know, why should they come to Laney and be part of this? Absolutely. Here's the thing with Laney, right? We're gonna we're gonna be with you. We got, you know, we got all these. You know, I'm here full time. Coach Hague's here full time. Coach Ramos is full time. Coach Rob is here full time. Coach Kev is here full time. Coach Vinch is here full time. DG and Deco are here half time, but they're here in the afternoon when you're down in this area. 
right? We're going to give you all the academic support that you need to be successful. We're going to push academics. We have our own strength coach. So you're going to go to the weight room and deal with a strength guy that's going to only going to worry about making you better in the weight room, right? Then here's what I tell people, right? And Eddie Hurd says this all the time. We paid Eddie Hurd to come to Laney. Now, is that illegal? No, because he qualified for a Pell Grant, $6,500. You get a, a, what we have at Laney called a completion grant. That means you pass 15 or more units with a 2.0 or better, or 2.5. You get another 4,000. All of a sudden, you got 10 G to come to Laney, <laughs> and all you have to do is go to class and get grades. Play football. Easy. Exactly. <laughs> right? So I think that's the way we have tutoring, we have study hall, we have all the things to help you be successful. Now, like I tell everybody, I can't help you until you get on this campus because I can't pick you up. So if you want to come and work, you want to compete, you want to be challenged every day, and you want to be supported, this is the place to be. I, sound, I mean, that sounds good to hear. I know a lot of players that came here and played. Uh, being at a different JUCO, I can say myself, I didn't have half those opportunities at my JUCO. And so, I mean, you know, for all the young players, you know, you're, you're Coach B. I mean, that's big right there, with all those opportunities. So. Thank you for coming on the show, Coach. I mean, Let me just say this, right? Yeah. You two inspire me. Two young brothers have found something to do positive in the community, right? You know, you're not letting go of what you're doing, but you're trying to help the community in your own way, yeah, this, which is around something you love, athletics. Yeah. It's not just football, but I'm sure football is the primary, yeah. Yeah. but it's athletics. My hat's off to you two. This yeah. is not yeah. easy. You putting yeah. yourself out there trying to make it happen. And I think for everybody out there, what you're doing for everybody, you letting them share, you're sharing with them your knowledge, your experiences, so that they don't have to make that mistake and they can go with it. And I'm not talking just about coming to lane, I'm just talking about life, everything you do. So you keep doing what you're doing. I know it's not easy every Friday or Saturday find the right speaker yeah, and get him to yeah, show up. Yeah. But I'm glad you had me on here. I, I had so much fun. You can Thank tell you, I'm fired bro. up, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. This Talk is one of our best interviews, Coach. Right. Man. I appreciate you. Appreciate all. it, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Good. Still went for it. It's time to change the club.